How to program a keyboard encoder for MAME or RetroPie. This is a continuation of a previous video on how to wire an arcade control panel. In that video I discussed options for wiring arcade buttons and also LED buttons. And now I want to show you how to configure your keyboard encoder for use with the Raspberry Pi. It's similar if you're using a PC, however there's a couple other tricks for when you're using a Raspberry Pi. A keyboard encoder is a fancy name for a device that translates your arcade push buttons into keystrokes. A popular brand, and the one that I'll focus on today, is by Altamark, and it's called the iPack 2. The other piece of hardware required is a computer. I'm using a Windows-based computer, and they also have software for the Mac. However, the software that I'll be using today, and the method I'll be showing, is similar for other Altamark products. So let's get started. This is how you can get to the Altamark webpage to download the WinIPAC software. Once it's downloaded and installed, you plug one end of the USB cable into the iPack and the other end into your PC, and then open up the WinIPAC software. And this is what the software looks like. The board comes pre-programmed. The drop-down menu here will tell you what button is keyed to which pin. If you click in here, you can navigate up and down by pushing the arrow keys. And on the right-hand side, it tells you what the primary button assigned to that pin is. On the Start button, you'll notice that there's a grayed-out square. That's because this button is shifted. And you can see there's a box with a check mark saying IPAC Shift. What this is telling you is that this button also acts as a shift key, which is similar to the shift key on your keyboard. If you push this button and another button at the same time, you can have it display a different result. So as an example, I have this primary on switch 8 is a V, and I can assign it a different button, meaning that if I push the start button here and switch 8, then it would give me this number asterisk or whatever button I decide to assign to it. For what I'm doing, I don't want to have any shift buttons. So to get rid of the shift button, I go over to the one start button, which is grayed out, and then I deselect the IPAC shift, and now it's no longer a shift key. On one arcade machine that I made, I used this shift function to exit a game. I would hold the player 1 button and the player 2 button, and that would push the escape key, which would exit the game. One other useful thing that this does, which I don't typically use, is write a macro, or a combination of buttons. To do this, you go to the macro window, select new, select a keystroke from this drop-down menu, click add entry, Repeat it for however many keys you want. And then select Add Macro. Now that's saved in there, I can assign it to a key. And apparently they allow 30 macros total. So now when I push the button that's assigned to the one start pin, it'll do that combination of button pushes. Now every time I make a change, there's a little message at the bottom of the thing that says the board was successfully reconfigured and there's no saving required. But if you wanted to program multiple boards with the same configuration, you can go here and you can do save as or use the import and export functions. They both do the same thing but they work a little bit different. The save as function will save it as an IPC file and the export function will give it an XML file. The only difference between the two is that when you use the import function, and I'll load a file that I was using for my Ninja Turtles machine, when I import this file, a message shows up that says board successfully reconfigured. So the file was loaded on the board. Otherwise, you would go to open, and here's one that I use for my Simpsons control panel with six button configuration. The file's loaded, but in order to make the change, you have to actually make a change here. And now you can see it said configure board down there at the bottom.
There is one more bit of important information, and that is you don't want to program a hotkey into your IPAC. So for instance, in MAME, the P would be the pause button. And if you were to program one of these as a P, every time you push that button, your game would end up pausing. Now in the case of Raspberry Pi running RetroPie, I think the letter S is also used for the select button, which is what I typically use for my hotkey. So it'll make the game do all kinds of crazy things if I program those combinations in. So one thing I'll do is I'll make sure that I don't program any of the MAME hotkeys in there. And this is how I went to a website that listed those. One build I had Raspbian running in the background, which if you watched my previous video, you'll know I don't recommend that. You can see they use control a lot for their hotkey. So unknowingly I was playing a video game and in the background Raspbian was doing a lot of open windows and closed windows and doing all kinds of crazy things without me knowing it. So as a rule I have a list of keys that I typically try to avoid. Here they are on the screen and I'll also list them in the comments. As a tip a lot of the number keys 1 through 9 are okay to use and shouldn't interfere with any other hotkey with your system. So again, depending on what system you're using, you'll want to avoid some of the keys. And the best way to find out if it works is just mashing all of the buttons at the same time. Now this list of keys to avoid is pretty long. It's extremely cumbersome if you're programming an X-Men 6 player because there's so many input buttons on that one. So that's really all there is to programming a keyboard encoder. You made it to the end, Earthling. You are ready for a promotion.